I was six, trips to the toy store consisted of me running to the rack full of keychains. I would look in between the names Eileen and Emily to find my own. First letter E, second letter K, third letter U, fourth letter A. It was supposed to be right there, but it wasn't. Over time, the notion of not fitting in became more verbal than passive. Your lips are popping out of your head. Your hair looks better when it's straightened. My mother says you look pretty for a black girl. They told me how to say my name, Aqua, Equia, or my favorite, Shaniqua. No, it's Equa. And as I grew older, it wasn't just my name. It became others molding my identity and experiences. These regular occurrences would undoubtedly shape my lens on life. Being told what to believe, how to believe, when to believe, I tolerated it and consequently, I lost my sense of self. I stopped fighting back, not because I didn't have a voice, but because I believed my voice wasn't powerful enough. Until one day, I chose to take a turn. If you're curious to know, my name Ikwa derives from the Akan people of Ghana it's the name given to baby girls born on Wednesday. Aww. Growing up in the Silicon Valley, an area of little cultural diversity, identifying myself as an outspoken Ghanaian American feminist was a curve away from the normal line. Silicon Valley is the tech hub of the world. One may assume that it was dynamic and filled with opportunities, but that couldn't be further from the truth. It was terrifying. Because within those opportunities that were marketed, at, marketed as for all, women and girls weren't present. When I was growing up, I didn't have anyone who looked like me. I can recall a time that I visited Apple headquarters in Cupertino, and I didn't see a single female of color. Women with backgrounds like mine weren't even in the building. As a child, I began to wonder if any other little girls shared you shared the experience of feeling left out of the conversation about the world we live in. Today, that's changing. A solution to what is arguably modern society's most gripping and time-sensitive issue, the inclusion of women in spaces of authority and change. Over the past few years, I've seen women of all backgrounds lend their voices to and eventually dominate social media campaigns. Last year, several prominent social media campaigns centered around women and girls. The most, the most prominent being hashtag bring back our girls. The social media tag called attention to the abduction of over about 300 Nigerian schoolgirls. The campaign began in the Nigerian capital of Abuja in um, mid-April, and soon enough it had spread far beyond Nigeria because men and women worked together to get the hashtag social media attention. It worked by the end of April, humanitarian celebrities such as Angelina Jolie lent their voices to call attention to the movement. By the first week of April, it had reached the White House, and a few days later, the First Lady, Michelle Obama, sent a personally signed note via Twitter and Instagram. I know that some may argue that using a tweet or a hashtag won't improve the status of women or solve world issues. But a wise woman, a wise womanist once said, your silence will not protect you. If the conversation is evolving, it will gain traction, and that traction can be used on the ground to start a movement through policy, and even more simply, a shift in cultural attitudes. To this day, I still haven't found my name in the store, but I've been able to connect with some incredible women who share similar journeys of feeling left out. <laughs> By connecting with powerful women online and reading portions of their realities, I was able to reaffirm within myself that what I was feeling was valid. I saw this quest as a new form of digital e-mentoring. The weird part about it was that these women didn't even know that they were mentoring me until I tweeted my appreciation to them. You see, Social media isn't only about posting pictures or throwing copious amounts of shade. It can be used as a transformative tool to shift current paradigms of thought. When I first started my Twitter account, my message to the world was, keep it classy, hashtag that is all. 
Now, I'm not exactly sure what I meant by that, but it definitely wasn't the most thought-provoking tweet or a call to action. I learned that to be an influence, I had to be vulnerably honest, regardless of what anybody else said, online or offline. We've grown far too accustomed to letting patriarchal ideologies vilify our thoughts. Pivot. Defined by Merriam-Webster, pivot is to turn around a central point. It's most common usage in basketball, where pivoting is an offensive move. But speaking up and out about our realities, positive, neutral, or negative, isn't an offensive move, and it shouldn't be perceived as such. You have the ability to create an online persona, declare your purpose, and make a promise. If you have the opportunity to make a difference in and beyond your social circle, make it your occupation. Agency and autonomy ultimately begins with owning your name, your brand. Hashtags do more than just link people. They link stories and catalyze entire movements. Now, sharing your thoughts can be understandably daunting when you're unsure of the validity or relevance but I'm encouraging you all to share your thoughts, be open, and be vulnerable. Women of color have also used this platform as a way to reclaim space. For example, hashtags such as, I'm not your Asian sidekick, yes, all women, and solidarity is for white women, call attention to society's unique need for intersectional feminism. This is where social media once again comes into the picture because it can be used as a centralized platform to connect all the women whose names weren't on the keychain rack either. Don't pivot. I did when others told me about myself. Don't pivot. Others didn't when media didn't pay sufficient attention to the missing schoolgirls. I'm telling you to create momentum. Others may be intimidated by your name, your intelligence, your beauty, your voice, but don't change for them. Don't change to appease them. Be unapologetically you. In the words of Chimamanda Adichie, you deserve to take up space. Thank you.